All right, I think we'll go ahead and get started um, today. So some of you may know me already. My name is Erica Schneider. I am the uh, Policy and Planning Manager at Parks and Trails New York. And today's webinar will be on Bike Friendly New York Business Certification, kind of the background to the program and some of the criteria businesses must meet and then a little bit about the actual application. Today's webinar is being recorded. It will be posted on, um, on our website and will serve as a resource for, uh, for other interested businesses or uh, economic development facilitators that want to help promote this, uh, this program in their communities. So just a little bit of background on, um, on kind of why this program is important and where it came from. It is um, based around the Empire State Trail, specifically the Erie Canalway Trail between, and the Champlain Canalway Trail, so Buffalo to Albany and Albany up to Whitehall. About a little bit about the Empire State Trail, it has been ranked uh, number one rail trail in the country by Outdoor Magazine. Of course, it's not all a rail trail. Um, we use the general term Greenway Trail to describe all types of multi-use trails. And this 750 mile trail has been um, open since 2020 and drawing visitors from uh, around the world that want to experience uh, New York by bike. And these cyclists come to visit and they want to spend their money at businesses and um, check out what makes each community special, each business unique. And so the way that we, Parks and Trails New York, have um, decided to help connect businesses with cyclists is through the Bike Friendly New York Business Certification Program. So there are a lot of recreational trail users out there. As of 2017, it was um, a huge industry, 48 million people bicycling recreationally and uh, contributing almost $100 billion to the national economy. And since COVID, we've seen this even increase uh, more than that. And right here in New York, Parks and Trails New York, with support from the uh, Canal Corporation, has been um, counting trail use on the Canalway Trail. So this past year, based on uh, trail use uh, counters from the past five years, we estimate that uh, the Canalway Trail system sees almost 4 million visits per year. And that is both local users and visitors coming from all over the world. And the Kanawha Trail, like I said, it's part of the statewide Empire State Trail. It's a destination um, contributing over 250 million uh, in sales per year to upstate economies. So this trail, it's a great recreational asset. It's wonderful for your communities, um, but it's also a huge economic driver. And one common uh, misconception is that cycling infrastructure is not good for business. Uh, but in reality, studies have found that uh, bike lanes and uh, other cycling infrastructure facilities like bike trails are going to increase business. The, a study in Portland um, from 2012 found that people who biked to a, um, a bar, restaurant, or convenience store spent 24% more per month than people who drove. This is mostly because they're coming more often. It's easier to just stop in um, at a bar or restaurant, just pick something up uh, than, than it would be in a car. You're already going somewhere. It's hard to find parking. So, so cycling, um, it's, it's good for business. Putting in a bike lane, maybe taking a few parking spots, we won't get into that. Um, but having the trail come through and encouraging people to bike is ultimately going to lead to an increase in, um, increase in business for you. And of course, this webinar is part of our Empire State Trail Town program. This is a uh, technical assistance and promotional support program uh, funded by the New York State Canal Corporation and managed uh, by Parks and Trails New York to communities that have applied that show that they are embracing the trail as uh, a part of their community identity and um, that offer high quality services and amenities for trail users and 
commitment to policies that uh, will make the trail experience better in their community. So um, this webinar, we have opened it up to any interested businesses. Some of you may be uh, part of the Empire State Trail Town program already. Uh, our, I'll just run through our um, participating communities. We have Brockport, which was the first um, first community, uh, pilot community in 2022. Last year in 2023, we certified Lockport, Newark, and Rome. And this year we have four new communities we're working with, Little Falls, Amsterdam, and Schuylerville and Fort Edward up on the Champlain. So um, as part of that program, we are encouraging um, the certification of businesses in those communities to help raise their profile and really show, um, show to potential trail users how welcome they are in these trail towns. But of course, we welcome bike-friendly New York businesses in every community along the trail. And in fact, it's a great way uh, to strengthen a community's application should they wish to apply for Empire State Trail Town designation. So what makes a great trail town? We've identified some qualities. Um, a couple of them are extremely relevant to businesses. The first one is providing trail oriented services and amenities, which businesses play a really big role and creating a welcoming atmosphere and unique community character. Businesses are the, the things that um, people want to visit, a great restaurant, a fun gift shop, um, that kind of thing. And so I just saw a question come in from Peter, a town that's not on, um, on a trail, that's not EST branded. So for right now, it's a little bit, it can't be an Empire State Trail town because we are managing the program through the Canal Corporation um, who is focused on the Canalway Trail, but there are ways um, to just take on the identity of a trail town without getting official certification. We at PTNY for our program walk communities through the steps, but I can put you in touch with resources um, that help will help you figure out what what you can do in your community without those that external um, without that external recognition or or designation. I'd be curious um, what trail you're on, Peter, if you want to share in the chat or Q and A. So now getting right into the um, the actual certification program. What is Bike Friendly New York? So um, it was established in 2017 to recognize and promote businesses that provide special accommodations for bicyclists. So connecting cyclists with businesses who who serve their needs. Pretty pretty simple. And the goals of the program are to enhance the um, Canalway Trail as a destination for cyclists, educate businesses about what their needs might be, what cyclists are looking for, and provide a pro promotional outlet for businesses that go above and beyond so that we can really showcase um, what, what they're doing and, and help people know that they're out there. Right now, we have over 200 um, 200 businesses participating in the program. Okay, Peter, I see that um, you're on the Helderberg Hudson Rail Trail. That's awesome. Um, definitely still encourage you to apply for Bike Friendly New York uh, business certification if you have a business or encourage uh, businesses along the trail. But um, right now, communities that aren't directly on the Empire State Trail wouldn't qualify for Empire State Trail Town designation. I think that makes sense. Okay, so um, why should you be certified? I already went over the high level um, benefits of, of bike friendly certification, you know, more, more business, more people biking to your business is good. Um, but in terms of actual uh, be physical benefits, I might say, um, you get a Bike Friendly New York uh, decal, which is up on the screen here, 
You can put it in your window. And we also have uh, signage available for purchase if, if you want to put that out out front, be a little bit even more visible. You'll get access to the Bike Friendly New York logo for um, social media or your website. You'll be listed on our uh, Bike Friendly New York interactive map, which we promote to trail users. Um, we um, put listings of the Bike Friendly New York businesses in our guidebook. And then specifically for trail towns, it's we're able to uh, showcase the businesses that are certified on each trail town map. So um, this helps us identify the businesses that will be most relevant for trail users because there are tons of businesses that are great to have in a community, but only some that are most relevant and will serve the needs of trail users. And those are the ones that we want to highlight. So um, that is a major reason um, to get on that trail town map for those Empire State trail towns. And then just generally reaching a wider, um, wider audience of potential customers. It helps build community. You, you get to know the other bike-friendly New York businesses and you get to know the, um, the cyclists that are coming through that always have really interesting stories. So the types of el eligible businesses that we've got are um, accommodations, which would be like bed and breakfast, hotels, inns, motels, that kind of thing, indoor lodging. Uh, we have camping facilities, so this would be um, like a campground, public or private, food and drink, retail, attractions, welcome and information services, and bike shops. Uh, we also have a category for other, but these are the um, these are the visitor oriented businesses we we seek to include in the program. And yes, so I'm going to go through each of them to um, because they each have some overwhelming or some overarching um, criteria that they have to meet and then each category will have their their own specific uh, criteria determined by that type of business. So the basic criteria are to have a physical location which is open to the general public and has hours of operation clearly posted at the location or online. So this mm -hmm. criterion is getting at making sure that cyclists have a place, there, there is a place to go, <laughs> that when they see it on the map, they know that it will, they'll be able to find it and they'll know when it's open. The second criteria is that it be located near and easily accessible from a greenway trail. So um, we focus the program on the Canalway Trail, but we will also accept other uh, businesses in other areas. And so this criteria wants to get at making sure that um, there's a safe way to reach these businesses. So most of the time that will be on a Greenway Trail um, or easily accessible is getting at there. You, it might be near a greenway trail, but you don't want to have to cross a highway to get to it. And then third, you must have an identified parking area for bicycles. And this can be a public bike rack in front on your main street in front of your business. It can be a bike parking area that you yourself as a business owner has installed um, for your business or it can be covered and secured bike parking. And this is um, specific for accommodations so that cyclists who come spend the night can have somewhere to leave their bike and feel um, good that nothing will happen to it overnight. Then as I said, the um, there will be additional criteria based on each type of business. So starting with accommodations, they must offer one night stays. This is really important for cyclists who are only staying one night. They must provide uh, covered and secured bike storage. So like I said, you need to be able to bring your bike into a, a garage or, a, or your hotel room. That makes cyclists feel a lot better about leaving their bikes somewhere um, and most prefer to have it as close to them as possible because it's their only form of transportation. It's, it's, it is their vacation. <laughs> 
And then um, we listed out a couple of other amenities and the, um, the business can choose from whether they want to offer complimentary bike locks, have trail maps displayed, the ability to receive uh, items that guests ship to them or to ship items for guests. This is great um, when you want to make sure that you restock on, on food or I mean, there's plenty of food on the trail or you know, send yourself a raincoat because you think it'll be rainier uh, later on your trip. This is um, a great service that hotels and other accommodations can offer. They could also provide discounts to trail users if you know um, that if you get a call that someone is coming in on a bike, um, offering them a discount is definitely a way to entice them to stay. And then, of course, having basic tools on hand is going to be a benefit um, for cyclists that might need to make just a few adjustments or, or pump up their tires before they leave in the morning. So campgrounds, these, uh, I don't think we have any campgrounds on the call today, but I'll just run through really quickly um, that they must have reserved space for cyclists with no reservation, no advanced reservation required. This is crucial because sometimes you don't know where you're going to end up at the end of the day. And to have that knowledge that you know you can reach a campground and have somewhere to stay overnight is going to make the difference uh, between whether your day is stressful or whether you think you might have to ride another 20 miles as the sun is setting. Like other accommodations, they must offer one night stays for cyclists and then offer two of uh, the following amenities that make uh, traveling a little bit easier when uh, when you are on, on a bike, don't have access to maybe Wi-Fi all day or um, you need to charge your devices you need those, those extra tools um, on hand that maybe you didn't carry with you. And of course, discounts go a long way as well. Then what about for food and drink establishments? So the big things we've identified for these, this type of business is to have the menu posted outside or online. This is very common now and easy criteria to meet, but it just makes it that much easier when um, you have your bike with you, you just want to be able to walk by and know if this is somewhere that you want to go without having to lock your bike, go um, buy, go put it away somewhere and then go, go into the restaurant. It's just much easier if everything's visible. And then have um, one of the following menu options, also pretty easy to meet, to have a vegetarian option, local food or drinks or energy bars or quick bites to go. These are the kinds of things that um, cyclists are, are looking for. I'm not saying every cyclist is a vegetarian, but um, but they're, they're often looking for food to fuel them. Uh, so, so that might look like some of these different things. And cyclists love local food. Anything that makes a place um, unique, they, they love farmer's markets and, um, and experiencing the cuisine uh, of, of a local establishment. And then we just have another list of, of things that uh, restaurants or uh, other food and drink establishments can offer, writing discounts, um, filling up water bottles. It's great to indicate that you're willing to do that. Um, even a little sign in the window that that you're you're open, if maybe if you're a bar and that's something you could do. And then oh, maybe cyclists will stop and, and get a drink too while they're there. Having a public restroom um, for, for cyclists that have been on the road all day. We know um, there aren't always restrooms where you need them. So opening those up to cyclists is, is a great service. And then offering charging is, is good as well. Retail establishments. Um, this is one of the categories that doesn't have um, as many requirements, but basically we want to see some way that you are making it easier for cyclists to uh, to buy your products. So sometimes if they're they're big, maybe like a gallery uh, might offer to ship items that customers purchase or things that are fragile like ceramics. Cyclists can't put it in their bag. That's not that's not going to happen. Um, they're not going to bring it with them. And even just little things is added weight. They don't want to carry it. So if you offer to mail um, mail the products that people buy then they can buy it and feel good and know that it'll be uh, waiting for them at home. And 
with the other uh, requirements or other uh, potential amenities that you can offer, they're the same as, as the other uh, categories. Attractions are things that we define as like museums or, um, or historic sites, things, places that might have, might have a gift shop um, or that might just be a, a, a place that people wanna, cyclists, people visiting the trail might wanna check out. So um, this can be, they can offer things like um, what, what I talked about before, offering to ship um, items that customers purchase, providing discounts, having restrooms, Wi-Fi, all these things um, that cyclists will be able to know that they can access um, when, they, when they reach this fun destination they wanna check out and then they get a bonus of feeling like they can just recharge both themselves with, with water, go to the bathroom, um, and then maybe their devices or, or look at a map. Then welcome and information services. This one is a new category that we introduced uh, within the last year. And this, this idea is to be able to certify uh, chambers of commerce or visitor centers, places that are um, information hubs. And so the requirements here is that they must be familiar with the other bike-friendly New York businesses in the area. And they must know basic information about the trail, how to direct uh, users to trail users back to the trail or, or to find what they're looking for. And then one of um, the basic amenities I've talked about again and again. And finally, um, bike shops. You might say, aren't all bike shops bike friendly? That's kind of a silly category. But um, for this category, we we expect bike shops that are extreme to go above and beyond. So um, offer basic repair tools and a pump for public use. So just if you stop by, you just need to tighten a bolt or or pump up your tires. You you won't have to pay anything. Um, they will offer bike rental or bike shipping services. And um, there aren't that many places on the trail that offer bike rentals. So this is a great way for bike shops to encourage use of the trail. And bike shipping helps uh, people start their, their vacations or end their vacations along the trail if they know that they'll be able to ship their bike home uh, when they get to said bike shop. And of course, one of, um, one of the other amenities that make, make a business more welcoming that I've talked about. So all of those kind of go into um, the specific criteria. I think um, maybe some have been new or interesting to you uh, or some have been pretty self-explanatory, but one of the easiest things that any business can do is something that um, Trail Town founder um, and advocate Amy Camp has identified as just put a bike on it. So um, putting a bike outside your business or, or something trail oriented, um, however your trail is used, it might be canal oriented as well, um, will really help draw people in and help communicate that they're welcome without needing to do anything else. So um, storefront displays or, or garden, um, garden features like in this image in Lockport, or naming a beer or an ice cream or a sandwich after the trail, um, offering trail themed souvenirs. These are all things that will cue uh, visiting cyclists from the outside to know that they're, uh, they're a welcome visitor. Uh, and I see a question, but I'm going to get into it um, at the end just to, to finish wrapping up. And so for um, a little bit more, on some of these concepts, we have a, uh, a handbook called Bicyclist Spring Business, handbook for attracting bicyclists to New York's canal communities. But if you're on a different trail, it can really be relevant to, to any um, trail side community. And it has lots of great strategies and, um, and community building, um, advice to help take advantage of the trail that you have in your backyard. So I, I will send that link in the chat um, at, at the end once I close out the presentation. 
And so the, the last thing that I'll speak to is it's a super simple online form um, that you can fill out on a phone or a tablet or a desktop. So if you're a business owner yourself, it only takes maybe 10 minutes. Um, it does require a couple images to be uploaded, one of the outside of the business and one of the bike parking that you offer. And um, otherwise, it's just checking boxes and a few short answer questions. There are a few questions that, that ask how you currently support the trail, um, but they're not required. So, so you know, we, we would love to see what, what you're currently doing. There's a question about how you're welcoming the trail users. That one is required, but um, the rest of them are, are just optional. We'd like to see what maybe what you're doing now and what you'd be interested in doing to support the trail in, in other maybe non-traditional ways. But the biggest thing is um, to kind of bring it home. The biggest thing is offering bike parking and, um, and being showing that you're welcoming to trail users. Those, if I can leave you with anything, those are the, the biggest things we're looking for. All the other criteria are, are bonuses that should be pretty easy to implement. And uh, once you have them, you can just check them off. So now um, I will read Catherine's question for attractions and maybe others. Our restrooms are located beyond the admission desk and we would require payment for that. Does this still qualify? We are also located directly across from Niagara Falls State Park that does have public restrooms available. Would that qualify? Yes, I would say in that case, I would not say that the restrooms that require payment qualify, but if you can direct um, trail users to a restroom within a five minute walk, that seems um, perfectly acceptable to me. Yeah, great, great question. Does anyone have any other questions? I'll, I'll just wait a couple. Um, give you a little bit of time to put them in the, um, the Q and A if, if you have them. In the meantime, I will um, get that link to, well, here's my information. I think we can end with, with this. Um, again, my name is Erica. Uh, my email is E Schneider, just first letter, my first name and my last name at ptny.org. I'd love to answer um, any other questions that that you have um, if they come up. I know that this the criteria might seem specific, but at the end of the day, we're we want to promote businesses that are doing good things. Um, so, so we want to be flexible and, and work with you and see, um, see, see what, how we can help and, and how we might be able to, um, to promote your, your business to this growing, uh, demographic of cyclists that, that want to explore our state's trails. All right. Seeing no more questions come in. I will be sending a follow-up email to everyone that registered um, and, and make sure that all of the links that I talked about get over to you. Um, and of course, again, feel free to email me, but I hope um, you found this quick, quick webinar informative um, and will help you go out into your communities and, and see um, if you want to certify your own business, encourage other businesses to, to learn about the program. Um, and of course, feel free to share this webinar um, with anyone that you think might be interested. All right, with that, I will say goodbye, sign off, and hope you all have a great Wednesday.